decided I'm just gonna do this video because I keep getting asked and um, the relationships that I have with people on both sides are good they are what they are they're intact they're safe I feel like um, you know God willing God allowing they stay that way and so I figured you know what I'm just gonna do the video this is going to be maybe a long video I'm not sure um, yeah, I wanted to, in the beginning, state I am not trashing anyone's religion. I am not um, throwing shade on either side. This is me, my journey, my opinions, how I felt, how I feel, what I noticed, what I didn't like, what I didn't agree with, etc., etc. Could I be wrong? Yes. But all you can do is trust that God is guiding us on the right path, the right way, and use our brains and use our hearts and pray and follow our spirits, right? So that is what it is. Um, so if I say something that is offensive to you because you completely disagree, uh, know that it's not like from a place of like me just being like ooh I'm so smart I know better whatever um my Muslim followers um just so you know if you fart, if you feel like oh man she's really saying these things about Islam know that I give it to my Christian friends and Christianity just as hardcore so without further ado I want to share my journey um, out of the church, away from Christ, into Islam, and back to Christ um, in that order. So I'll just start with, I think I'll start with how I became a believer. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just start like from the beginning, I'll summarize the middle, I'll get to my, my last draws. And then we'll go through my Islamic journey and then we'll come back out to where I am now and what I believe now. So, um, I became a believer in God and in the Bible and in Yeshua, Jesus. I'm going to use them interchangeably here because it's just easier. Um, in, uh, in the spring of 2010, which would have been my freshman year in the spring. So I was at school for a semester and then January came in the spring, uh, like March came and um, I became a believer. I was just very unhappy. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I just, I just, I just wasn't happy. Like, I just hated everything about myself, everything about everything. And I, I, I just, uh, there were just things I just hadn't gotten over um, in my past. So, um, I, it was one night I was in my room in college and I was just like man I don't want to live anymore I don't want to be here like this you know I just hate this but I remember just praying and remembering back to like I had an old Bible and I was just like oh okay yeah yeah God this this whole God this whole religious thing right and so I, I prayed and I was like you know God if you're real then save me if you're real then like do what it, do you know? Do whatever magic you do, uh, make me um, yours. Change like change me, like give me peace because I don't have that. And in that moment, I felt peace wash over me. Um, I I stopped a lot of the big sins that I was doing um, and just started going to church at at a like, on campus church. It was super accessible. I could just walk there. It was great. It was called the Journey Church, and those people were so good to me. Um, I knew nothing, like, like literally nothing, and um, but like just like the the very basic, and I only knew like half of the basic, right? And so um, I was in a a small group with just really honest and humble and just really cool people. Um, it wasn't anything like heavy on theology, but it was the lifestyle, it was the grace and the love and your relationship with the Lord and um, I, I think it was a really good foundation but um, fast forward I met my man <laughs> and he invited me to 
a campus ministry. That campus ministry was connected to a, a church. Um, again, great people. Um, really, really going hard after God. They love the Lord, love God, love Christ. Um, but this one was a little different in the in the sense that it was Baptist, and they really hardcore cared about their you know theology and doctrines. Which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, that's great. Um, I think where for me it went south was the idea that if you don't believe with my ref if you don't agree with my reformed theology and my beliefs on the Trinity and my beliefs on dispensationalism and my beliefs on you know eschatology and all of these other things then like are you really walking with Christ like do you really love Jesus do you really love the Lord are you on the vehicle like that was the tagline are you on the vehicle um, and so I won't go into detail but there was a lot of church hurt a lot of what I would call straight up spiritual abuse um, a lot of it I I witnessed a lot of things and um, it was under a certain type of leadership that I witnessed certain things there was also a lot of oppression, I feel like, of um, women. I don't know that anyone would agree with me on, I do know that people would agree with me on that, but I don't know that anyone, um, it, it wasn't like, no one, yeah, no one's getting like beat up, you know, that we, well, no, that's not true. It, it wasn't from the leadership that people were getting like, women were getting like physically abused and verbally attacked and all this stuff. It was just like this idea that not that men were superior because the, it, it was always the caveat. You are equal, but <laughs> you are equal in value and worth, but <laughs> and for me, um, I think I got to a place where I was just tired of the but and the you must submit and um, it just it just didn't work for me when I read the Bible. I was like, yo, this makes no sense. Like I just where does this come from? Why, why is God like women? Shut up. <laughs> like, you know, the whole verse about women be silent and just all, all of these ideas I just felt like were more cultural for that time and for what was going on and maybe even for that specific group of people, like literally that specific like group of people that the letter was actually going to and not this idea of every woman from the dawn of creation till God comes back <laughs> and you know takes the earth away if you are married you must submit to your husband I just I was like man that's, that's that's just not good and it was hurting I think a lot of things in our marriage and so it was just not good I won't even I'll stop there anyway so then we went into another church that was not um, part of the SBC but it was affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention which I've completely left the Southern Baptist Convention. I have a lot of issues with that um, organization, whatever, but um, they were affiliated with it, but they were not under, totally under that leadership. And so um, we were like, okay, like, let's go here. Um, again, great people. They love the Lord, you know, going after God. But it was this, there was still like this idea of, um, Mm, I'll call it what it is, Christian elitism, and this idea that the, the men in seminary were like the elites, the big dogs, like the take off your cape, I'm the superhero, you know, and, and everybody else who kind of like got talked down to in a real Christian-y way though, kind of, it, it, it was patronizing in my opinion, but um, the issue was I wore a head covering and perhaps the style was not the favorite style and other women could follow my lead and start covering their heads and then good lord what would we do you know and so that was a problem there was also i shared one article on facebook about how mary moeller um i did not agree at all with her assessment of men essentially your husband being responsible for your sin before god so if women if, if we're supposed to cover our heads and we don't cover our heads, then and my husband doesn't believe I should cover my head, then at the end of the day, my husband's going to be responsible before God for me not covering my head. I couldn't get on board with that. I was kind of like, mm, I think you're off here. And so there was a video about it, the head covering movement, the man who runs that organization, he did like a 
point by point debate with her like like on a video had her clip go and then he stopped and talked about his point with scripture that sort of thing and the church saw that and was like oh, we are all seminary people and we're all under Al Mohler whatever and that's disrespectful and I was like I don't feel bad like one it's my platform two I'm not under Al Mohler <laughs> three I have free speech and I think it was a good point and nothing he said was disrespectful he wasn't like mean or whatever and they're like well Nate you know your husband shared it with the wrong caption or something it's just it was just like ridiculous and then it was like we celebrate Lent and you shared an article that was against Lent for P Protestant people and so I was kind of like well Protestant people typically historically don't do Lent so I don't see how that would be like a problem anyway that was like a whole shebang it really ended in a really hard way I cried because I really loved the people at that church but I could not deal with basically being like put in my place for being too different like being black and having a head covering and having opinions was too threatening because they wanted in my opinion they wanted the black couple to fall in line so they could throw them up in front of the church and hey we're diverse you know and I'm being real so <laughs> it's it's probably what 10 minutes into this video cut it off here if you don't want to hear more anyway so all of those issues were issues that were like personal issues, but it still, it never rocked like my actual like faith and like intellectual belief in the Bible in, you know, certain theologies. So then I got to a point where um, I just wanted to be honest with myself and really challenge myself with some of the doubts I had. So I started to research the Trinity. I started to research um, the history of the Bible. I started to research um, the history of the Torah, I started to research all of these different things, all the different Bibles, you know, like there's different canons, there, like there is, like that's legit, you know, and I wanted answers to this, I just didn't want to be like, duh, you know, anymore when people asked me, and so I, I just, I was like, God, I trust you, like, this is scary, but I want to, I want to take this, take this leap. And of course, I was talking to my husband about it the whole time. He was like, no, like, this is good. You need to do this. This is, I support that, whatever. So I start to read up about certain doctrines, primarily the Trinity. And it just got to a point where I was like, I am done. I cannot believe this. Like this, it's like, I can't even, I'm not going to unpack that here because it's a video and there was, there's no way I could like make this make sense in my mind and then on camera but so that you guys can understand but essentially I could not get on board with the doctrine of the Trinity as it is expressed in the written doctrine and in, in things like the um, the Nicene Creed and stuff like that I just and I think the Apostles Creed has it too and I was just like nope no thanks can't I don't I don't agree with that I don't think God, for me, it was the wording that God is three distinct, if you look up in a dictionary, you will get separate persons. So a synonym for distinct would be separate. So no, I did not believe that God was three separate persons and one God. I just couldn't, you know, and I couldn't get on board with the modalism idea that oneness Pentecostals have, and um, I couldn't do the whole Mormon thing of like, this whole completely separate God. I was just like, all of it, I'm done. And so what I um, eventually did, is I think I just got like really angry that no one was talking about this honestly, that no one cared to go back. Let's look at the church before Augustine. Like, let's look at the church before Constantine. Like, wh what actually happened? You know, like what existed? And it seemed like no one cared. And so I was like, you know what, this may be just not the truth. So then I started re researching religions, I looked at Judaism, I felt like for me it was incomplete. I, I just felt like, okay, God's being real quiet for a long time, there has to be another messenger here, like somewhere, bro. Um, and so that's, you know, and I was just like, Yeshua, Jesus has to be a part of this equation. Like, in my mind, if you look at the facts and history, he is the Messiah like he just it just makes it just makes sense so the only belief system that affirms him being the Messiah and one God 
um, apart from Christianity would be um, Islam. And so when I started to look and research into Islam, there were so many different ideas. Like I can't even like begin to unpack all the different ideas, but essentially, you know, one God, the faith of Abraham, they included Ishmael, like Ishmael actually meant something here. Um, Cause I'd always wondered like, dang, like God, you know, blessed him. I was kind of like, okay, like we're done. <laughs> um, and you know, Jesus was the Messiah, but there wasn't this idea of, you know, worshiping him, but he was highly regarded. He was a prophet. Um, they, they, you know, Islam holds that uh, Muhammad is a prophet. And I felt like, oh, that, that, that kind of makes sense. You know, Ishmael is part of the Abrahamic lineage. Like, you know, they can get, they can get a prophet too, <laughs> you know? And so um, a lot of things kind of started to make sense. And um, even, even, even things more with like physics a bit um like it just it went to a deeper level that i hadn't seen or felt in christianity and there were just a lot of questions that in my 3d world i had to have answers to and i felt like there were answers and christianity did not give me those answers right um and so i got to a point where i was just like okay like I essentially agree with so much of what I'm reading in the Quran and um, I had this book this is the critical lives um, Muhammad and um, it's by Yahya Emmerich um, and it's basically an informative biography it's it's pretty not biased so I thought it was good information um, and I was reading um, this Quran by Abdullah Yusuf Ali and I had another um, Quran translation, I'm sorry, this is a translation um, by Ahmed Ali. Um, this one does have the Arabic, it has the transliteration, and it has the English. Um, and so I did a lot of research and I did a lot of studying and I was like, some of this is just so beautiful. The idea of keeping one language, the idea of, you know, in, in Islam, Allah um, put the Quran, the words of the Quran, the Holy Scripture in Islam in people's minds instead of just pen and paper to where stuff could just get totally messed up and ruined and papers lost and Dead Sea Scrolls here and you know whatever. Um, and I thought hmm that, that, that would be a smart way if you didn't want your stuff to get you know messed up again put it in people's heads. Um, and so it's, it's recited um, and it's memorized by a lot of people so I thought like okay that's really legit. Um, and oh, there's so many other things that I just really connected with. So I, I always had the struggle though of like in Islam, you know, Jesus is the son of Mary. He is in the son, the son of man. He is not the son of God. And if he is the son of God, it's just this idea that we are all children of God uh, in a not at all literal way, like at all. There's no divinity in Jesus at all in Islam. And for me, I was always like, but I just feel like the Messiah was just a little bit more than just like human. I mean, like he just did so much. And, um, even in Islam, he had these miracles and he, like a human, Jesus created, um, a bird from clay but like, you know, in Islam, it's by the will of Allah, like through the power of God. Um, but I was kind of like, but he's so created. Anyway, there are just, there are just things that I questioned, but I still was like, I don't have a home in Christianity. I feel, I do not feel safe. I do not feel a part of at all the church, like the church completely done, you know? So it was just this idea of like, I just want a home and so much of this I agree with maybe this is the truth maybe I just need to like convert and take my shahada and then God will just give me more um and so uh, I had friends that I was talking to and just bouncing these ideas off of and I had you know I asked some of my very close very dear trusted Christian friends I was like yo I'm just going through some stuff just pray for me because I'm really struggling with my faith right now and so you know I, I like I just oh I felt so many prayers but um, I did make the decision to just go ahead and say my shahada but um, now now you know I learned after I took my shahada that I didn't do the whole 
if you leave Christianity and you become a Muslim, then you are supposed to actually like put up your right finger and denounce that Christ is, um, that Jesus is not the Son of God, nor is he God, and that whole thing. I didn't do that. I just, you know, did the basic Shahada. Um, and so, yeah, I became Muslim. I started to, I immediately started to do um, the prayers. I think my first day I just did like three, and then like from then on for like a solid month, I just prayed five times a day, um, making wudu and all, you know, all the different things. I was educating myself. Um, I was reading Hadith. I, you know, I was just trying to get involved with the Muslim community and locally and just, you know, really just try to get some community and get some help and get, you know, and <laughs> just figure it out. Um, so in that, I learned a lot and I think after maybe the first six weeks, it was, it was like six to eight weeks, I started to feel like maybe this is not for me because um, during my prayers, I would never pray the whole part about like, and God has no son, like God, God is not begotten, nor does he beget, um, or he begets not, that, that sort of thing in, in Arabic. I would never say that part. I always skip it because it just didn't, like, ah, oh, like I just couldn't, I just couldn't say it. Um, and so finally I just got real with myself. I was like, look, like, if you can't, if you if you can't not believe that Jesus is the Son of God and quite possibly is divine himself, if you can't shake that, then that's something in you and you're not a Muslim. Like like you're like you're not like a Muslim can only worship one God and that God has no son and that God uh, begets not and you know what I, you know what I mean? Like it's just it was just this idea of, okay, get real. You can't have your cake and eat it too. As much as you would love to live like a Muslim or um, have, you know, that Muslim community and just feel like you're part of something that you mostly agree with, but then there's like this one or two things over here that you just don't agree with. Um, it's, it's just not going to work out. And so I made the choice to um, leave Islam and I told a few people maybe two or three days after I left Islam because um, I was just like oh here we go like people are gonna judge me they're gonna be like oh you're flaky oh you're wish-washy oh you're the person in the Bible that is swifted and drifted away at every uh, wave of uh, new you know doctrine and you know all this stuff that verses in James 1 by the way if you don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> um, and so I just was like I don't want to talk about this in public I don't even want to deal with this you know whatever but of course you guys notice on my social media so I never was asking me questions and I was like I don't know where I stand so I got to a point where I was like okay I'm just gonna start over what is the litmus litmus test that I'm holding everything to and it came down to, in Islam, I did not feel settled and at peace and okay because my idea of God was forced to change. I couldn't believe God was my loving father who personally wanted a relationship with me, who would die if, if he so decided that that's what it took within himself, you know, like to, to, to get me. It wasn't this idea that he... God needs to kill things in order to forgive, but God decides that that's the way it's going to work, which is the whole idea of the sacrificial system in, you know, the Tanakh or the Old Testament. It's this idea that um, in, in Islam, everything was framed around why is, why is there a need, you know, for God to kill a human or in Judaism, it's the same thing or why, you know, there's, there's no need for that. And I just came to the idea of, well, you know what? It happened and whether or not it's needed. God decided that it happened. So whether or not Jesus needed to die, that's not really the question. The question is, did God decide that that's what happened? And, you know, am I going to be okay with that? And so I just looked, I re looked at some history and I was like, okay, in Islam, God, the, the, the scholarship talks about maybe it was Judas put in Jesus's place or, you know, whatever, but it's, it's that Jesus 
was not crucified, nor was he killed. Okay. So in my mind, I have to just be honest with myself and say, well, who was on the cross? Okay, God, why, why would you allow someone to hang on a cross, either switching it, making it Judas, and it only appears as Jesus, because in, in the Quran it says that it just appeared to the people that it was Jesus on the cross, but in, in reality, it was not him on the cross and he did not die. Well, that stresses me out because I'm sitting here thinking, why, why would you make it appear to people that it was Jesus on the cross and then proceed throughout the Quran to basically talk about punishing people for shirk who believe that? or for people who, who, the Christians who took that and ran with it. Why would you even put them in the position to even like think that? And I couldn't find any answers for that in scholarship. It was it, like, it just, it was kind of like this idea of like, well, Jesus was just a prophet, he was just a human. So, and Christians kind of just ran away with him and like went nuts. So it's just not that important to talk about, which is fine. And that's, you know, that, that works with some people that it doesn't bother, um, Muslims, you know, especially not people who have converted or reverted from Christianity. For me, it bothered me because that was the one thing I could not shake and I needed a solid answer as to why it would look that way if it did not happen. And, you know, if God did do that, why would a God, like, not deceive, but why would God, like, allow it to just look so deceitful, de deceitful, you know? And so, all of those things, I feel like I went off on a tangent, but, um, those were a lot of things that I was wrestling with in Islam and that's why I came out of it. And so when I went back and looked for answers, um, I just came out with, there, if, if, if there's a lot more, most likely, like someone hung on the cross and it was apparently important enough for everybody at the time to, to talk about it. And even when Islam comes, it has to be addressed. So I'm just gonna go with, there's this big hoorah shebang it's probably true and Jesus did hang on the cross. Okay, if he did, why? And so basically the standard Christian theology comes in, um, but for me, I just had to look back into my, you know, Hebraic roots or Messianic Jewish roots and um, just read the scriptures for myself again and interpret things the way I think that they should be interpreted for all of this to make sense collectively. Um, and so that's what I did, and I went back to my ye old faithful Tanakh, and I just started reading, and I just started noticing, like, okay, stuff is obviously worded differently here. Um, it comes from the Hebrew, you know, maybe Christianity did get off, you know, not maybe, like I knew Christianity, modern day Christianity is just so, so far off from what it was in the ancient times that, you know, it, it, I, I never was trying to go back into modern day Christianity. I knew I could not live in that. Um, and so I just found a place right now where I'm comfortable um, believing that not in the Trinity, but um, I learned about physics and I learned about um, super string theory and the idea of multiverse, i.e. multiple uh, universes. Um, you know, not not so much parallel universes. I well, that plays into it. But basically, I learned about time spatial um, uh, dimensions, and I realized, oh shoot, yeah, you're right. We're in a 3D world. God obviously transcends our just three dimensional space, just like we can transcend the 2D world. We live in 3D. We can look into the 2D. We can manipulate the 2D but we are 3D, right? Um, so I kind of just had this idea of like, what if 3D Candace tried to operate and manipulate in a 2D world? How would I, how would I like, you know what I'm saying? Like try to tell people in the 2D world or tell the organisms <laughs> in the 2D world about me, my family, who I am, what I believe, my heart, how I feel, how would I do that? Um, and it just started to click with me like, okay, God obviously is not confined to three dimensional worlds or universes. He is, he is within all of the different dimensions. You know, there's 10 dimensions. 
he's in all of them. If there's more than 10, he's in all of them. He can manipulate all of them. He can communicate in all of them. He can do all sorts of stuff. Can I understand and see and know what God is doing in the fourth dimension or in the fifth dimension? Absolutely not. But we do know scientifically that there is a fourth dimension. And then suddenly I was like, okay, God is expressing himself. And I didn't really want to get into this, but I'm just going to, I'm going to just summarize it. So don't eat me alive, theology police. But it's this idea that God is Father, God is Son, God is Spirit. I'm not talking about in the Trinitarian way of three distinct persons. I'm saying God is all of when I say God, Elohim, I am saying Father, I am saying Son, I am saying Spirit, I am saying that that's that's God, um, and God can be all of those um, concepts at one time, at different times. He can show whatever He wants to show, whenever He wants to show it, and He is choosing to communicate to us that He is a Father, that He's a loving parent, not that he has gender and he is a dad with a penis. No, like be it never that we, you know, even think of God, you know, like in, in that way. But um, God is saying, I'm, I'm a parent. God is saying, I'm also really humble. Like I don't just like go around ripping y'all to shreds like I can, you know, and being, you know, an egomaniac. Like I'm humble. I'm son, you know. Because that's how we, we can understand that. Everyone can understand a father of son. Every, you know, most humans, all of us can understand like our spirit man, like our inner being. And so I feel like that is how he chose to describe himself, but it's not this literal idea of I am a father, an old guy with, you know, whatever, which is I feel like if you watch a lot of the videos with Islam like I watch, that is the idea you will get, which I don't feel like that's what it's saying but I feel like Christianity has kind of made it that way so whatever but anyway I just basically realized that God can be everything that he says he is in the scriptures without me going into this doctrine of man called the Trinity um, and just accepting like within physics time spatial dimensions you can be all of these things but to me it's looking like you're one at a time or you know whatever and so that is where I am now. Um, Baruch Hashem, alhamdulillah, praise God. We found a Messianic congregation here where we live in Florida. Um, we, we, we like it. It's solid, I think. Pretty good, pretty good theology as far as we can tell. And um, yeah. We like it and we feel like, I feel like it's got the, the fundamental that I, like my litmus test for everything truly is the Tanakh, um, the Torah. And, you know, for me, I just felt like God was too different in the Torah than who he was in the Quran. But I don't believe that Muslims, Jews, and Christians worship different gods. I just think that in each religion, the view of of God of our creator is just different and I'm okay with that so I'm not going to be engaging in this uh, I feel like people who leave Islam like beat it up and like oh it's so evil all oh, this terrorist no terrorism is not Islam Islam to me is a, a very beautiful religion it's just it didn't have the answers for my biggest questions so I could not be Muslim you know um, and I I will not have uh, Islam or Muslim bashing. Um, I, I hopefully I was respectful all of my Muslim friends. Um, I won't have Christian bashing on this page either. Um, Christian friends, hopefully I was respectful. I do not mean to annihilate or crush or whatever beliefs. It's just where I am or what I believe based on what I can understand and what God has given me. Um, but that's where I am. Um, so I guess most of you all will be like, oh, you're a Christian. I kind of have a hard time taking that label because there is like one thing that I agree with, you know, Christians on, I feel like, which is, you know, there was a, a, a man who was divine, who came, 
he, you know, did the will of um, God who was in heaven, who is in heaven, who was also in him. And he died on a cross for the sins of the world so that people who believe in him can have everlasting life. That is it. So that's why for me, I have a hard time taking on the label of, as Christian because with that comes Trinity and this and that and this doctrine. I'm, I'm like, psh, do away with all of it. So that's where I am. I wanted to update you guys. Hopefully you guys like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Be nice in the comments or I will turn those bad boys off so quick or I will just block you and delete you. I just... I don't like the bullying or rudeness, so please guys be honoring in your comments, please. Uh, um, but, 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 I think that's it. Alright, bye everyone. Mm -hmm.